Greetings! This video is for both new users and previous users of my Excel Checkbook Register Spreadsheet. There will be different sections you can jump to in this video which will be outlined in the YouTube description. New for 2024, the latest version adds a reconciliation feature and it also includes a complete overhaul of the dashboard for charting. I also added a fifth register sheet which means that the spreadsheet can now support a total of five different bank accounts. This Excel spreadsheet is compatible for both Mac and Windows as long as you have a version of Excel that's been released in, say, the last six years. I'll start with an overview of the entire spreadsheet and then dive into greater detail with example usage. When you open the spreadsheet, you'll arrive at the first worksheet labeled Notes, which has some basic information about getting started. And as you scroll down the page, you'll also see some hyperlinks to resources. And for those on Microsoft Windows, definitely take note of the link related to unblocking the file because it does have three macros inside that we'll talk about here in a moment. But let's move over to one of the sample register sheets. When you download the spreadsheet, you will see some sample transactions, particularly in this first register sheet, just to give you an idea of how it will look after you begin making use of it. And as mentioned before, there are up to five register sheets in the in, in the file and you are welcome to rename these to more meaningful names which can also include changing the description at the top of the screen new for 2024 is a complete rewrite of reconciliation there's now a separate sheet called reconcile and we'll go into great detail on how this works but it will work in concert with a button on the register screens called reconcile mode on off that when clicked it expands open some hidden rows to show what reconciliation period you're working in and what dollar amounts are you're expected to to clear by marking each transaction with an R as you review it against your statement. The dashboard screen has been completely overhauled and I'll spend greater time talking about it in just a moment. And here's a quick example of what it could potentially look like with a lot of bank accounts being maintained in your file. We'll also spend a few moments to talk about the future transaction sheet, which is a place that you can put recurring transactions that with a single click can be added to the bottom of whatever registers you designate. There have also been some small revisions to the card debt worksheet, and this is a place for you just to track current balances of any credit cards or personal loans that you might have with the goal of getting those paid off and just having some visual graphs just to help you visually track that progress. And lastly, we will talk about the category sheet, which you can certainly customize to your preferences, uh, just a place for designating what categories make the most sense for you, which will apply to the charts on the dashboard. But we'll go back now to the first register sheet and just talk through the columns and how you might populate an entry. These register sheets can be used with any sort of bank account, a checking account, savings account, credit card, really any sort of an account that deals in dates, descriptions, withdrawals, and deposits. Here on a typical register worksheet, we have a column for the date of the transaction, an optional column for a transaction type. Uh, you're certainly welcome to populate that if you happen to download transactions from your, your bank. It might include that as a, as a type. We have a column for check number, and then visibly at the top of the screen, you'll always see a reminder of what the last check number entered into that particular register might be. So, for example, if I started typing in 204 because I was getting ready to write a check, uh, as your register worksheet just gets longer and longer, it's nice to have just a visual reminder that's always at the top of the screen letting you know what the last check number was. Next, we have a column for the withdrawal amount. Or if it's a deposit, a place to designate that amount. The balance will be computed automatically. And then we have a column for subcategory, a place that you can designate a category for each of the transactions. Let's walk through a quick sample. Perhaps my next entry is just a few days later here in August. So I'll type in 8 slash 5 slash 23. And I can either hit the enter key or the arrow key. And I'll come over here and put in what the place of purchase was, PetSmart. The amount was 56.23. dollars 
and I'm just using my arrow keys to cursor over here in the drop down list. I can click and find that I do have a category for, for pets, animals, cats, dogs, for example. And after choosing that, it automatically knows that that falls under a broader category called living expenses and an even broader option called expense. And this will apply to the charts that we'll see in a moment. I mentioned briefly before that you certainly can rename these sheets at the bottom. So for example, if I do a right click on register one and choose the option for rename, perhaps this is my personal account. Perhaps register two is a joint account. So I'll do a right click, choose rename, type in joint and press enter. And here in a moment, we'll see those renamed worksheets apply to the dashboard and the reconciliation screen. Now, please do note that as you might enter transactions, uh, for example, let's say that I put an entry for August 6th, uh, 2023. If I don't put in a description and I merely put in a dollar amount, the balance will not be shown. So uh, you'll, you will have to put in some sort of description so that the balance will then appear. All right, let's take a quick visit over to categories. So here's the list you are certainly welcome to change and customize to the subcategories and category labels that make the most sense to you. One recommendation that I'll give is not to get too granular with your subcategories. You want your choices to be broad enough that it makes sense to see it under a chart. So for example, any transactions that fall under uh, entertainment, that would be represented with a particular chart. Okay, returning to this first worksheet called personal, let's talk about one of the benefits of using Excel to maintain or record your checkbook entries, along with how you might use this for sort of some ad hoc budgeting or forecasting. And one of the things that I like to do in my own personal checkbook is to put some entries that I know will be arriving later in the month just to get a better idea of what my bottom line will be looking like toward the, toward the end of the month. So for example, maybe I know that I have a, a mortgage or rent payment that will be coming due and I'll just put in an arbitrary amount over here. Maybe I also know that the, the water bill uh, will be arriving you know, later this month, so I'll put a note in for that. And again, maybe also have a, a car payment that comes to uh, toward the end of every month. So I'll put another arbitrary number there. And I can see that my bottom line does not look too good. But again, that's one of the ways that I like to personally use uh, this spreadsheet. Uh, now I'm going to clear out these sample entries that I just put in and then talk about this sheet called future transactions. So here's the idea of how this works. In this table, you'll put in recurring monthly transactions. For example, I have a cable TV bill of $145, cell phone bill $122, car insurance $100, etc. And I've designated what day of the month these transactions typically hit. I've also designated a preferred category for the transactions and which worksheet they should post to. Lastly, you can designate skip rows or how many blank rows would you like to skip? So this button or macro will go to the bottom of your register. And in this case, skip five blank rows before depositing or posting this transaction. And then this next one will, will immediately follow because there won't be any skip rows. But then for this Capital One card payment going to the joint register sheet, it will skip two rows, but use the 16th day of the month as the a typical date to post this to. So let's check out the results. So I'll click that button uh, leap there at the top. And now when I go visit that first sheet called personal, I'll see those future transactions here at the bottom where it skipped five blank rows and then put in a future date, the description, amounts, and category. And the same is true for the joint spreadsheet. We're only skipped two blank rows before putting in those future recurring transactions. Now, this is a feature you probably would make use of just once a month at the end of the month or maybe at the very beginning of the month where you, you know, click that button and have those future transactions posted.
Next, we'll talk about the reconciliation feature. So if you do like to reconcile your checking account, as an example, and you get your monthly bank statement, you can visit the reconcile sheet. And here's where you will put in your statements, start date and end date. Often on a typical bank statement, they might be referred to as your pre previous balance as of date and new balance as of date. When you begin using this sheet, I do recommend that you populate your nickname, the register name here in this uh, B column, just to help reflect, you know, which register sheet uh, each one is. But let's say, for example, that I've, I've got my bank statement that lists a date of 5-31-2023 as the start date and an end date of around 6-30-2023. After ending, entering those dates, there are some formulas that will automatically go look in that personal register to determine how many checks there are, what those dollar amounts are, how many withdrawals there are, and also the total for deposits. So if you happen to look at your bank statement and you immediately see that these numbers are matching with what's been found, uh, you can probably safely conclude that everything is, is okay. But let's talk about a common scenario where perhaps you know, something did get mistyped or not correctly entered. From looking at your statement, let's say the statement indicates that there was $373.69 in this particular period and that the amount of deposits or credits totaled $1,390. Uh, we see that here in red, the withdrawals found in the spreadsheet uh, is not a match, so it shows up in red. So here's the idea of how you might re resolve this. So I'll, I'll visit the personal spreadsheet. And here in the rec column, short for reconcile, at this point, I would now just start to look at my bank statement and just verify that I have accurate amounts and every entry. And perhaps I might start by just uh, reconciling the, the checks, but I, I probably will want to click this button here to toggle these extra lines to display. So watch as I, for example, put an R in the amount here for the Walmart check and an R in here for this check, we're seeing the withdrawals to clear uh, reduce. And as I continue to match up the transactions with this statement, I suddenly noticed that, oh, the water uh, sewer service was actually $62, not $42. So I'll correct that entry now mark it with an R, continue on, and now I have cleared all the withdrawals. And then the last item within my bank statement was a deposit of 145. I reconcile that. It's also indicating cleared. And when I return to the reconcile sheet, uh, everything is now a match. You know, and after you've completed a reconciliation, uh, you can certainly leave these numbers in here if you like. Uh, what I would personally prefer to do is just to blank out uh, those dollar amounts there and probably even just blank out the start date and end date and just you know wait for my next monthly bank statement. All right, next we'll turn attention to the fully revamped dashboard. In this sample file, I have uh, a number of bank accounts represented and transactions going back for uh, five years. And when I first view the dashboard, it's showing me grand totals for withdrawals and deposits, and then also totals for deposits and withdrawals by month. And we also see a chart for top five expenses by category, a tree map that shows top 15 expenses by subcategory, and just another variation showing expenses that are over $1,000. One of the neat features for the dashboard are all these buttons or slicer controls. So as an example, if I click on 2023, I'm now only looking at transactions that fell within that particular year. And all the charts have updated to show me only values in the particular year 2023. I can further filter the view by choosing a particular register. For example, if I would only want to see the bank account that I happen to call joint, I can click on that. And now again, the charts have updated to show me only those items that have been categorized for 2023 in that register called joint. For each of these slicer controls, you do have a button to clear the filter. So I will go ahead and clear out the filter on register and the filter on year. So one of the other things that can be kind of interesting to do is to, for example, look at your 
expenses categorized month by month. So for example, I might look at January and I might first look at what those look like for the current year versus the previous year, 2023, previous year, 2022, et cetera. Or another interesting thing uh, that you can do is here in the categories list, you can look at uh, the broader categories. For example, I'll click on food and drink, and maybe I'm curious to see the compared year after year. So I'll click on 2023 versus 2022 and, and see how that particular categorized expense changes from year to year. All right, so that is a quick look at the revamped dashboard for the new version of the checkbook register. And now we'll go take a look at the sheet called card debt. So here's a place where you can enter in your current credit card debts, other personal loans, and just have a easy visual way to see what your progress is on paying off those items. So for example, let's say that I have a, another credit card I'd like to track. So I'll put in uh, perhaps today's date. Perhaps it's a uh, Chase credit card. So I'll just give it a short little la label. Current balance is $1,239. There's an optional notes field if you'd just like to make a mention of maybe the current interest rate which you're being charged. And next, this uh, column called initial debt is where you would put in perhaps the value that is the highest balance you've ever had on that particular card. So let's say, for example, that when I first uh, started to use this card, I had $1,800 in use, but I've already you know, paid it down a fair amount. So after entering that information, I have a bar chart here for the Chase credit card account showing this roughly around 30% paid off. And let's say that uh, here on the next day, I have made a significant payment to that credit card. So I'll put in that the new balance is $875. And we'll see that particular chart now grow in size to represent that I'm getting closer to paying off that particular card. So this is something you might update once a month, once every other month. The date column is just where you can indicate, uh, you know, when did you last update the balances for this worksheet? So I hope you found this brief walkthrough helpful. Uh, please do see the resources noted here on the first notes sheet. And you'll see a link there for a video on how to copy data from a previous older version to this newer version. This notes sheet also includes some important technical details and steps that you'll need to follow to make sure that the dashboard works correctly and just some other resources that can be helpful. So please do consider subscribing and liking, and if you have family or friends who might find this helpful, uh, please do point them to this video. Uh, you'll find a link to download in the description below. And thanks for watching, and happy spreadsheeting.